Hey guys, so today on the bench we have a Yamaha 5.1 or 7.1 um, surround sound amplifier. This is one of the fancier ones that has a HDMI on the front and some aux inputs. I think it's a bit about five years old now, five, six years old, not 100% sure. This is the Yamaha RXV787 and it has cinema DSP and stuff. Uh, I don't know what the pure direct button does. And he has a sticker with like a bunch of the gimmicky things that it has. Okay, so on the back of the amp, there are a lot of <laughs> inputs, inputs and outputs and connectors and things. So let's start on the one side. Okay, so we have some weird custom connector for a dock of some sort. A three component input with a optical audio input. Uh, next to it, same type of thing, but with um, digital coax. And yeah, quite a few inputs. Um, we have a phono input at the top. Uh, S video input, well, S video is quite old. Uh, FM input, um, two HDMI outputs. Uh, your standard RCA inputs. Um, component video monitor out. Okay, I'm not sure exactly what that's for. Um, then a bunch of audio inputs. And then we have a preamp output, which is quite nice if you want to connect another system. And then we have, wow. The reason, that the reason this amp has so many connectors is um, I think you can have like outdoor speakers as well. So that's, um, that zone two is for like the different zone or the secondary zone and then we have your main front left and right channels your center channel your then you have your main left and right channel and then you have your surround sound uh, or the back left and right channel so i think this is a 7.1 system could be wrong and then you have five hdmi inputs yamaha is the model number again Made in Malaysia. Okay, so let's start. Let's open this thing up. Okay, so we're looking at the main circuit board. Circuit board now. I have an analog devices chip, probably some DSP. And this is an interesting thing. This is a Alteria Cyclone 2 or 4, I can't really see on the screen right now. Um, FPGA that controls all, or FPGA or CPLT, I'm not going to Google it now, um, that controls all the interface and stuff. Some memory next to it. Um, some chip that I don't really. Next to it is some silicon image. Sorry, silicon image. That probably handles the, H the the process of getting the audio from the HDMI. And what other chips do we have? We have some Samsung RAM for, sorry, it's out of focus. We have some Samsung RAM and some chip. I don't know what that chip does. Um, I can't even read from it. And then a chip from Texas Instruments here on the left of the screen and that handles your most of your DSP functions I guess um, it has a Dolby logo on it and obviously some RAM to go with it oh yes you can see it actually quite nicely this is probably a HDMI selector switch this one as well although here are two HDMI sockets that are not populated so these will probably switch between the HDMI signals and this silicon image chip also gets uh, some HDMI, uh, gets the HDMI signals. And then this one, I'm just going to call it a multiplexer chip, also has some traces going to a ribbon cable that goes to the HDMI port on the front. Also, I forgot to mention quite a big heavy transformer here, Yamaha branded obviously. And yeah, a lot of digital stuff and heat sinks, a lot of heat sink. 
Oh yes, and a small power supply board here at the side. Okay, so I took out the main motherboard. You can see a bit more of the more down and dirty electronics. Not just all the digital stuff, here's some mostly analog things. So your FM receiver, a bunch of relays that goes to your different um, speaker pairs. And yeah, it's like an interesting daughter board here at the side. The main motherboard plugs into this side or vertical board. It has a bunch of capacitors and filters and stuff on it. But then goes to your different amp boards down here. Okay, this might be a bit difficult to see, but Yamaha has some custom Nippon Chemicon caps made for them. It's a 70, 71 volt at 6800 microfarads, but it, the, cap, the capacitor is literally Yamaha branded, and there are two of them. Um, also, this is the board that uh, connects directly to the phono connectors. And I don't know if you can see it, but that thing has its own op amp on board and a lot of capacitors. Also, these are the main power transistors. There are 14 of these large transistors on this heatsink. Okay, so the problem I have had with this receiver for like the past 50 minutes is that it wouldn't turn on. Now this is uh, apparently a protection feature that uh, Yamaha have implemented into the amp like if it can't boot successfully after three tries it refuses to turn on anymore. This can be caused by like a speaker cable disconnection or a short or whatever and the solution to this that I found online is to hold in the tone and info controls and then press the main power button and then it will boot and then it will go into a service repair type of a menu system giving you a lot of debug information um, to go out from that you just press or turn the unit off again with the soft power switch and then turn back on and then it should boot normally and as far as I know this is uh, the only problem this amp has if I play some music play some uh, some music it works fine now I just need to check every channel and then yeah I think that's it okay so to test the different channels I just use a small JBL bookshelf speaker um, that I connect to each channel to test how it works and to test the two main channels properly I connected them both to my large uh, 12 inch PA speakers um, and they worked fine. No issues at all, so I would say this amp is working perfectly. Okay, so you can hear a bit of distortion, but that's not actually the, there when you're in real life. That's only from the mic on my camera. Um, if you guys like this video, please subscribe, and yeah, thanks for watching.